Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be continuing uh, from our last video that we did on uh, pivot tables, uh, so inserting your first pivot table and if you haven't seen that there should be a link on the screen now so you can go and check that out or alternatively you can also check it out at the end of the video. Uh, in that video we showed you how to get a pivot table into your Excel workbook, um, obviously based on some data you already had in there and then just to how you get started and walking through the pivot table. In this video, we're going to quickly show you how you can summarize your data, uh, so a little extension to the data we previously used when it comes to doing things like uh, summing, counting, uh, averaging in, in terms of the pivot table. What we've done uh, is we've got a new document that we're going to be using, and actually it's the same document uh, we previously used, it's just uh, we've just added a little bit of detail onto it. So uh, we'll probably update this into the previous video, um, but link in the description and you'll be able to download this workbook, follow along or obviously be able to use it and to delve into it after the video. What we have in this data is, or in the pivot data, data a sheet that you see here, we've got a number of addresses, uh, an individual's name in column D and this is what we used to get our pivot table in the last video. What we just added is this one highlighted in yellow here for population and for the purpose of this video we'll treat this as the population or the people living at that address. So uh, to just to give some context to the example, let's say that these are the these are a number of addresses. You know, they're all in the UK. Column D could be main, maybe the uh, the lead occupier for that property. Uh, and then the population is the number of people living there. So this could just be um, Mia Sims and then her husband, what would make up two people. Or we can see uh, Caesar Brook here in row four. So this might be Caesar and he's then got himself and or maybe uh, his partner and maybe a child. Uh, but the main purpose is just to give us some numbers rather than really get anything too detailed here. So we've added column E in to give us some numbers here. What we'll do is jump across to our pivot table, uh, so where we left off in our last pivot uh, video. Uh, also, with uh, one more note um, mentioned before we carry on, is we've also set up a playlist for pivot tables. So what you've had to do is, if you look in our play playlist section, if that's not how you found this video already, uh, you'll be able to see all our videos on pivot tables so you can follow from start to finish as we gradually build through and work on these tables. What we did get to is, uh, in the pivot table so far, is we've shown you how you can do a count based on the information we had before we had that population data. So that you can see the number of um, the number of addresses that we had in each of those cities. So at the moment we've got country along the top, and that's just for the United Kingdom. So we're not too interested in that because um, obviously there's only one country in this at the moment, so we can just move country back up to our filter, what removes it from column. So what we now have is we've got Birmingham being the city and then we can expand that to give us the address. We could expand each address to give us the name and there you can see we've got, we can see it's just one person there. So what we can now do is because we have added the additional information of uh, population, we now need to update our pivot table range because we've added an additional column that's not currently being uh, included in the pivot table. So what we need to do is go to the top of our screen, you'll see uh, you have this uh, option here for pivot table tools. Uh, yours again might look slightly different depending on what version Excel you're looking at but you should be roughly in the same region and the same type of buttons that you're looking for. Underneath that center you should have this button here of change data source. So what you can do is if you just click that you'll see that it'll go back to wherever your data is stored in the workbook and it will show you the range where your pivot table is. And we can see our pivot table is currently in the range A1 to D101. And if I just move to the side, you can see that obviously it's up into your column D, you can see um, identified by the dotted line. We just now need to include population in there for E. So we can simply either reselect by clicking and dragging that range, or even easier than that is you can just click into here this range, delete the D in our example, and enter the E. And that will update your range once you press OK. And you can see that population has just now been added into a selectable field here. So what we should do again is we'll just remove name from here in our values so that we're now back to having just city, address and name in our rows and then nothing else in the filters, columns or values. What we'll do is we'll bring our population down into values and it's already done it for us but what that then does is it gives us a sum. So we can now see and then what we're going to do is just get rid of our subtotal from address 
So we can see that for each address, we can see what the population is. So we can see we've got some population of twos. We've even got a four in row 11. So at that address, there's four people living there. And that's by getting sum of population. So in order to change this, because we could put it back to account just so it showed um, one uh, a number of addresses. If you click your little drop down by sum, and you can go to value field settings, you can see you have a number of options. So you can have summarized values by sum, count, average, and many other options available to us. So at the moment, we've got sum selected. So that's going to, as we filter back through our pivot table, that's going to give us a total for the area. So we can see that Birmingham has a population of 67. Uh, and what might be easier if we just, because you can bring it down more than once, we'll bring population down again. So we've currently got two sums of populations. So you'll see Birmingham is saying 67 and 67. What we'll do for the first one is we'll just change that to account. So to do that, we just bring it into our drop down. And then once we get this pop up, we can select count and then do OK. So the benefit of this is we can now say, OK, we've got the count option here for population. So this tells us that there are 29 addresses in Birmingham. So if we were to expand Birmingham, you would and then you did you've manually counted all of these addresses here you can see you've got the total of 29 here at the bottom of the screen. We go back up. And the benefit, so obviously if you're down here at address level, you're just going to see a one against every single address because uh, each address only appears once in our data. So we can see there's a total, not, total of 29 addresses in Birmingham by using the count method. When we use sum in our second population, we can see that we've got 67. So there's a total population of 67 people living in these 29 addresses. So that's obviously a different dynamic of what we can do. And this is where pivot tables are really useful because it allows you to do all these summaries and crunch the number in different ways without having to enter our formulas in. Uh, and obviously the main benefit of that is if we had more levels, so we had maybe country, city, um, state, any other different um, drop down, or not drop down, sorry, uh, filterable criteria, we could expand or roll up our data as high or as low as we needed to. Uh, and what we could also do, what helps validate, not validate, but demonstrate that, is if we just pull country down into our table as well, and we get rid of our little subtitle, subtitle here. So the benefit of this being that at the moment you can see United Kingdom, we've got currently 100 addresses and a population of 237. By expanding down to city level, you can then see how that's broken down. You can see that Birmingham has got 67 of those, Colchester 36, so on and so forth. So this is the real power of um, pivot tables that you can uh, dynamically go through and summarize at whatever level you require. The last one we look at, in addition to count and sum, is we also have the ability to do average in this very simple format. So let's pull population down one more time. And this time we will go make sure we're selected into this column. And we can see we've got count, sum and sum. So let's just go into here. And let's change this one to average. So we can go into average. And as simple as that, and let's just change the formatting. So let's just make it to like that and one decimal place. So we can now see that the average has told us that in our addresses, we have an average of 2.3 people per address. Um, what's really good. Um, so we've got a count. So we, we know we've got 29 locations there. We know we've got a population of 67, and our average population per address is 2.3. So that's a really quick sort of look at pivot tables, taking them one step further in how you can um, uh, summarize and analyze your data. Uh, I hope this was really useful to you. If you've got any questions at all, as always, drop us a comment below, uh, or if there's anything you'd like us to cover off next, because there will be a lot more videos on pivot tables. Um, and we're just trying to do like a bit of a slowly introduced to these different concepts before going, trying to do too much in one video. If you have any topics, as we're then going to say, that you'd like us to cover on pivot tables or any other videos or functions in Excel for that matter, why not also drop us a comment below or we've got the links into our Facebook and website in the description for this video. So you can reach out to us there also if you'd rather. Uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time YouTube uh, or as soon as a video of ours hits YouTube. And if we don't hear from you before, we shall see you in the next video.